Welcome back. In this video, let's look at things called Spring Boot Embedded Servers. We would be looking at a few things called embedded servers and we would be talking about two of the famous embedded servers with uh, Spring Boot which are Tomcat and JT. There is one, uh, one more thing which is called Undertow that's quite popular also. So basically Spring Boot supports three embedded servers Tomcat, JT and Undertow. So we will look at a couple of them and we will look at how to set up a small application and see how to do things with that specific thing. So let's first start with getting an application, simple application set up with Spring Initializer and then we will see what happens when I run it, how is Tomcat server used and third step we would look at what is the concept of an embedded server, why is embedded server important and then we will see how to switch to JT. Does it sound like a plan? Let's get started now with setting up a simple project with Spring Initializer. Spring Initializer is not a magic thing as such. It's star.spring.io. That's basically the URL. So if you go to star.spring.io, then you would see a website where you'd be able to create a simple project. So if you come in by default, you would see this simple version, which it looks something of this kind. All that you need to do is enter a group ID of com in 28 minutes, Spring Boot, enter artifact ID of student services, I mean, actually, it doesn't really matter what you enter in here, but these are the values I entered. And you can choose in web, and that's the only one you need to choose, really. So if you type in web, you'd get web in here. So just select that. You'd be able to see it in here once it's selected. I have a few other things selected. I'll remove the JPA, dev tools, actuator. I don't need them. So I just probably just select the web and click generate project. So once you uh, generate the project this would zip up a maven project because that's what I have chosen in here default is maven so it would use the specified version of spring boot it creates a maven project and it would download a zip to your local machine once you take that zip extract to a folder you are ready to import it into your favorite IDE so the idea I'm going to use is Eclipse all that you need to do import this project is file import existing maven projects do a next and paste in whichever project that you would want to copy, I mean, whichever folder you unzip the zip to. So put that in here. You'd be able to see this prompt.xml in here. Just go ahead and click the finish button once you see everything. And once you click the finish button, you'd see that it takes a while. Uh, after a little while, you'd see that the project would be initialized. So the name of the project would be something like student services or something. So you can look it up. The name I have in here is Spring Initializer Project for Copy. So this is, I mean, I'm creating a lot of videos. So I kind of use this printing initializer copy for all of them. So once you import it, you should see a project like this. So you should see a Java file. You should see an application property. You should see one test file and a pom.xml. We chose one dependency, Spring Boot Starter Web, right? So what I have done is I've ch chosen a couple of more dependencies, but the most important one is Spring Boot Starter Web. So if you look at Spring Boot Starter Web, that's the dependency which is used to typically develop web applications with Spring Boot. And to run web applications, you need a server, right? So I can't run a web application without having a server. So one of the things you would see is when I control and click open manage location, open pom.xml, that's what I'm doing. So open pom.xml is what I want to do. So if you go into Spring Initializer project, you'd see there's a dependency on Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. So what is this? Why is the project depending on Spring Boot Starter Parent? So the Spring Boot Starter Web, if you look at it, it's depending on Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. Also, if you go and look at your Maven dependencies in the imported project, you would see a few Tomcat stuff in here as well. So you are seeing a Tomcat Embed Core, EL, WebSocket, and stuff like that. So why are Tomcat jars coming as part of your application? Typically, you might be used to seeing like you separately install a Tomcat on your machine and then you deploy the application in there. So you create a var, you take it and put it there. Or you would be using a Maven plugin, Tomcat Maven plugin and probably deploying the var directly into the Tomcat. So in those kind of situations, you would not see Tomcat in your Maven dependencies. But here we are seeing it in the Tomcat dependencies. Why is it so? So the first thing which we see is that the default starter, so Spring Starter, uh, Spring Boot uh, Starter Web, the default is Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. So Tomcat is the default embedded server for Spring Boot applications, Spring Boot web applications. I can override that and provide other stuff, but Tomcat is the default. So 
The first thing which is important is this concept called embedded server. So what we have is now a setup. We have the project setup. Uh, we have seen that the Tomcat is the default embedded server. Let's also see it in action a little bit so that we are comfortable with that. So uh, the way you run it is right click, run as Java application. So there's nothing in there. So I'm just going in running in. Uh, it, there is no controller or anything in there yet, but you'd see that the server would still start up. So you'd see uh, that now uh, the, I'm just launching it as a Java application. Remember, I'm not deploying it to anything. I'm not launching any plugin. I'm just launching it as a simple Java application. And you would see that it would start uh, slowly loading up stuff. Okay, there are a few things that are loading in because of a Spring Boot feature called auto configuration. And you can see here, that Tomcat has started on 8080. So I'm running a Java application and Tomcat has started on 8080. So typically if you are developing web applications, this is what you would see when I run a web application, when I deploy a web application into server, then it says Tomcat started on this port. But this is just a main application, right click run as Java application and Tomcat is started on specific ports. So it's also saying started this application in 1499966 seconds. So we can now that we are using Tomcat. But what is the concept of embedded server? That's the most important thing to understand, right? So now Tomcat is part, you can see that Tomcat is launching up. How are we getting Tomcat? That's the most important thing. We are not really installing the application in Tomcat. What is happening here is Tomcat is also a part of the application. So if I'm using Spring Framework, will I have it deployed on the server? No, what would happen is it would be part of my var file and I deploy the var file into the server. So the Spring, Boot, Spring Framework, which is in the var file will be used on the server, right? So similar to that, the embedded server concept is basically have, embedded, have the server embedded in your application. So don't install your server separately. So let's say I have a, a dev box. What is typically done is I have a server installed and then install the application there. The concept of an embedded server is little different. Why do I need to create a server separately? Why can't I have server as part of my application? And when I launch the application, the server starts up. So to deploy a server application on any environment, I don't need the server anymore because server is already part of the application. All that I need is Java. Once you have Java 8 on that machine, so if I want to install this application on a Unix box, all that I need is Java 8. I don't need Tomcat, I don't need WebSphere or anything else. I need Java 8. Once I launch up this Java application, the server would automatically start up because the server is already part of my application. The server jars are already part of my thing. So if you build a jar like this, so if you do a MVN clean install, take the jar file which is generated and you can give it to anybody and they can directly run it on any, app, any server where Java is installed. That's all you would need. You would not need anything else. That's the beauty of embedded servers. Now that we looked at embedded servers, let's look at Jetty. So how do I use Jetty in my application? So you have something against Tomcat, so you don't want to use the default one which is provided, that's Tomcat. So how do you do that? So I go to start a web. So start a web is the one which is bringing me the Tomcat one in. So what I would need to do is, I'll go to start a Tomcat. So Spring Boot start a Tomcat. I'm copying it from there. Instead of Tomcat, I want to use Jetty. So I'm saving it. That's it. Is that as simple as that? Let's see what would happen. So I'm saving it now. So you can see that Jetty is getting downloaded now. So you can see that building workspace, a lot of stuff related to Jetty is getting downloaded. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A lot of things are getting downloaded. Let's not count how many things are getting downloaded. So this might take a little while. Finally, it has completed uh, putting everything in, downloading everything in. So let's look at the Maven dependencies to see if we can look we can find something which is related to Jetty. Oh my God, there are a lot of stuff which is related to Jetty, right? So you can see it took a lot of time because of this. So there are a lot of Jetty jars that are being downloaded. But right now, if you look at it, I have Jetty and I have Tomcat. I don't want both of them, right? Why waste my, if I want to use Jetty, I would rather have only Jetty on my dependencies list. So how do I exclude Tomcat app? So I'll go here. So there is a concept called exclusions in Maven just go and add in an exclusion. So I'll format it and I won't want to exclude Tomcat. So by default, Spring Boot Starter Web is saying, I'll give you Tomcat. But what I'm saying here is, okay, 
I don't want to take your default. I want to provide an exclusions. Uh, exclusions. Exclusion. Okay, let me quickly format this. So this is how it should be. Hopefully this works. I see a red mark here. But hopefully it goes away. Oops, I see a red mark here. What does it say? Ah, I don't need the dependency. Aha, that's what it's saying. So instead of dependency, it's called exclusion. Okay. Refreshing my knowledge, I guess. That's cool. So now I can go and look at the dependencies and see if there is anything related to Tomcat. So Jetty is here. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything related to Tomcat in here. That's awesome, isn't it? So now I'm using Jetty. So let's restart the application. I'm killing it. And let's launch it again. Right click run as Java application. Okay. What will happen now? So it's launching up. What would launch up? Okay, you can already see Jetty in here. Mm -hmm. So Jetty started on port. So Jetty is started on port 8080. So now we are using Jetty instead of Tomcat. So that's as simple as this. So all that I needed to use uh, do to use Jetty was exclude the Tomcat and add in Jetty simple world. That's all about Spring Boot embedded servers. So in this video, we looked at how to set up a simple project with Spring Boot. We looked at how to use Tomcat to run your application or by default it uses Tomcat to run your application. And we looked at the concept of embedded server. And then we looked at how to switch to Jetty. And you'd see that switching to Undertow would also be a very simple exercise similar to whatever we did with Jetty. So those are the stuff that we discussed as part of this particular. At in 28 minutes, our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos, and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you'd love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web application, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present, which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best use of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video or the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28 Minutes signing off.